Imagine right now, it's a deep night, and you are dreaming. You are dreaming about a perfect world. A world, when we live in harmony with nature, there is no more global warming, and you know that we will really live in a great, sustainable life. We live in a world when people are nice and kind to each other. There are no clashes between the nations. People are listening to each other and respectful to each other's needs. We live in a world where nobody cancels a speech <laughs> on a day or two's master meeting. <laughs> now imagine morning has come. You open your eyes. You take a look around yourself. You check your phone for the news and you realize, oh my god, it's reality. I really live in a perfect world. It wasn't just a dream. What would it feel like? Real life in a perfect world? Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Well, unfortunately, it's still not a real reality. We're not living in a perfect world. I found out just yesterday. I was traveling from Budapest. In a Budapest bus station. Those of you who've been there, you know it's even uglier than the bus station in Bratislava, and that one is pretty ugly. So I, I'm there, and I'm traveling with student agency, which is a very small company compared to Euroline. So I go to Euroline's terminal, and I hope that there is, I will see some small student agency sign, but I didn't. Um, so I went to the information window of Eurolines and I asked the lady, I showed her the phone with the email, I said, please, please, I don't travel with Eurolines, but do you think you could just help me where, where, this, uh, where this stop is? And she tells me, no. <laughs> don't travel with Eurolines, I will not provide you with any information. I said, but there, there's nobody behind me, there's no queue, and I just, I'm not asking about the schedule, I would just like you to tell me where, where the stop is. And she told me, no. <laughs> and, and that really got me thinking, well, we're not living in a perfect world. <laughs> there were different situations in my life that were imperfect. For example, a couple of years ago, I started visiting um, spinning classes that's indoor cycling. I really like movement. I really like music, particular kind of music. And there were different instructors. There was one instructor who was really well with the rhythm. And like the, the way she was pedaling, it was right in the rhythm of music. Unfortunately, she was playing bad music. Music I didn't enjoy. She didn't play scooter, and <laughs> she didn't even play heavy metal. And then there was another instructor that, well, was playing all this kind of music, but he was like doing random movements that completely confused me all the time with the class. <laughs> And I realized, well, I'm not living in a perfect world. <laughs> and for a very long time, I was waking up. I wake up for a good morning Toastmasters meeting, which starts at 7. And every time I would wake up, I knew I had only 13 minutes before I need to leave the flat. And I really love to get a cup of hot tea in the morning. But I need just 30 minutes, and you spend the first 15 minutes shaving and in the shower. You just 15 minutes left, and then there's not enough time because I boil the water, I put it in a tea bag, and the tea is too hot the moment I need to leave the flat, so I cannot manage my tea. I realized I'm not living in a perfect world. I was living in a world that sucked. And you might take a look, and you might take a look at me, and you might say, "Man, this guy he sees everything as a problem." <laughs> and you know what? You'd be right. But what I think, it actually is great when we take a look around ourselves and we see everything as a problem. When we see everything as a problem, we can get acquainted with and as a problem that we can crack. It took me a couple of months before I realized that it can be the first thing in the morning I do right after waking up to get the water boiling. I quickly shave and then I put the tea bag into the hot water and the moment I finish my shower I just pour the water over the bath and the moment I leave the flat it's the perfect time to drink my tea. Problem solved. You know how warm it felt? Mm -hmm. Going to the spinning class I realized well this guy well, he's, 
he already sucks at rhythm, this girl, she sucks at the music she picks, I could do it better. And only because of that, only because I saw those people doing it wrong, I decided I can do it better than them. And I decided, okay, so how about I go and become a spinning instructor, even though when I was the most unsportive kid at high school. And with Budapest, I also tried to solve the problem. The important is how to frame the problem. First, I thought, and I know you might think, oh, Lucas, he's such a kind guy, he was thinking how to help the lady and make her smile. No, <laughs> I just wanted to take revenge. So what I did, I just wrote on a small piece of paper to this lady, I was a stranger in your town and you didn't help me. I hope you feel good now. And I, and I put it to her, I gave it to her on the window and I just put it in front of another customer and asked him to pass it to her. I didn't see her, I didn't see her reaction, but just the situation that you, I was something I was thinking about, some problem I tried to crack and I made it, I mean, I took an attempt made me feel so good. And ladies and gentlemen, I think if we take a look at the world around us, at a world that sucks, that's full of these opportunities, of problems to crack, if we take it as a game, then at that very moment, all problems become an opportunities that we can really start enjoying. Because you know what? If that 85-year-old lady from a Marek speech was enjoying her beautiful life, there would be no such speech. If everybody would be confident in speaking in front of others, there would be no Toastmasters. And if nobody would be cancelling their speeches last minute, there would be no Tom Kent, our, our <laughs> ultimate reserve speaker. <laughs> so if I'd like to call you for one thing, just take a look at everything that we have around ourselves, every problem, the corrupt politicians, the boss who doesn't take your opinion seriously is something that you can crack. The moment all your frustration disappears, it turns into focus. And then, agree with this way, we all can make the world that sucks a better place. Bit by bit. Absolutely.